One of the more common interfaces used inside of Java is the comparable interface. What I've done here is I've created a user-defined class called student. It has name, grade, which stands for grade level, and GPA. And the user can set all three of these values when a student object is instantiated. And then at the bottom here, I have created three accessor methods that allow you to get name, get grade, and get GPA. I've created two objects called S1 and S2. The first one is called Joe, grade level 12, GPA 3.5. And then we have Bob, who also is in grade level 12 and a GPA of 3.5. In order to compare these two objects, we have a useful method from the object class called equals. And we can write it down here to make a comparison between all three of these, one of these, and I've just chosen to use the instance variable grade and make a comparison that way. So these two would be equal on grade level. But what if I want to compare them to say, are they greater or less than one another? And you might want to say, well, why would one student be greater or lesser than another student? For sorting purposes, what happens if you want to put these into an array list? or an array and say one comes before the other. You have to be able to give it a way to say this one is before the other or this one is after the other. The equals method simply cannot do that. All it can say is one is equal to the other. It can't say one is greater than or one is less than. The comparable interface allows us to do this with its one method compare to. And you can see that it is a very popular interface all of these classes implement it. And that's not to mention all of the classes that inherit or use these classes in one way or another and use the methods of these classes one way or another. It is so popular because it allows you to make that comparison between objects. If the first object is greater than the second object, you want to return a positive number. If the first object is equal to the second object, you would return a zero. And then finally, if the first object is less than the second object, you would return a negative number. Let's go see how this works in code. I'm using the student class from the previous slides, and you can see that it still has a name, grade, and GPA. And the only thing that I've added is a toString method, which allows the user to print out the object with the name, grade, and GPA displayed. If I'm going to compare two student objects, I'm going to have to realize the comparable interface. So I'm going to say implements comparable. And now that I realize the comparable interface, I can use its method, which is compare to. Compare to is always going to return an integer value. And we'll talk about what that means in just a sec. The compare to method has to take in a value because it has to have something to compare its current object with. So we're going to say object, and we're going to call it temp. And then we have to class cast that object into a student object. So we would say student other equals student temp. So now that we have a student object, we can compare it with the current student object. So we do a series of if statements. So we say if, and we're going to make a comparison with the grade level. So we're going to say if get grade, which is the grade of the current student, is greater than other dot get grade. So the grade of the other student, the second student that I'm looking at, well, if the first grade is greater than the second grade, we want to return a positive number. So we're going to return positive 1. Then we're going to say else if get grade is less than other dot get grade, we're going to return a negative number indicating that the first object is less than the second object. And then finally, one object is not greater than the other or less than the other, well then it must be equal. So we just say else return zero. Let's go ahead and test this out to see if it works. I'll compile it just to make sure there aren't any errors on this side. 
there aren't, so we go over here. On this side, we can see that I have constructed two objects. And as I said earlier, we can make a comparison between them using the equals method. These two will be equal uh, because their grade level is the same. But if we want to go more in depth and say, is it greater than or less than, uh, we can't do that with the equals method. So we're going to comment that out, and we're going to look at some code down here. This code says compare to returns. So it's going to give us the value that compare to returns. And then we're going to save that into a value called result, and we're going to handle that in a meaningful way. Remember, there's three things that we have to handle. We have to handle if it's less than, if it's greater than, or if it's equal to. We're going to say if result is less than zero meaning that the first object is less than the second object. So we're going to tell the user that s1.getName comes before s2.get And then we're going to handle if result is greater than zero, meaning that the first object is greater than the second object. I'm going to copy this system out print line. And now S2 comes before S1. And finally, we have to deal with, well, if it's not greater than and it's not less than, then we can assume that they are equal to each other. So we'll say S1 is equal to. All right, let's go ahead and compile it, see if this works. Now remember, we're comparing the grade. So we should get a zero, and it should come to this else statement. And it does exactly that. Zero, Joe is equal to Bob. If the first one is greater than the second one, we should get S2 comes before S1. Let's see. And Bob comes before Joe because Joe is greater than Bob. And then lastly, if Joe's grade level is less than Bob's grade level, we should get a negative value. And it does exactly that. Negative 1 and Joe comes before Bob. The comparable interface is a powerful way to compare objects, not just for equality, but to say, does one come before or after the other? And this is especially helpful for sorting objects.